Hey, what's up everyone? I hope all of you guys are having a wonderful Friday today. It's finally the weekend. It's been a long week for me, but throughout this uh, past week, definitely there was a tournament and then now there's a double elixir draft challenge. And this is one of its first because before they had double elixir challenge, but not draft challenge. So this is again involves drafting a better deck. Uh, if you guys ever seen my video on how to draft better, definitely apply this to uh, apply the same concept, except this time it's double elixir. So more expensive cards, now are actually worth more so in my opinion the uh, wizard and, the, and uh, the executioner they're actually their value goes up they're like one of the top because you know they're only five elixir cast but you're double elixir time so it kind of has three and whereas if you draft like a lower elixir cost the, um, the wizard hard counters all those uh, little units like goblins spear goblins and skeletons so yeah that 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 specific card goes up a lot in my uh, list of uh, rankings for card but as you can see here, I got and I defeated a challenge. I got my 64,000 gold as my prize. And right, right now, we are actually uh, we actually won 12 out of uh, and lost one time. So I just want to share some replays on how I drafted and why I picked those cards, and maybe uh, also mention what, how I would rank those cards as well. So let's show the last three because the last three are usually the hardest battle because they match you up with people that are just as far as you in the challenge. So let's start with this one right here. <clears throat> so right here, I actually choose the uh, Ice Wizard because Zap is just a spell and then you zap it and it goes away. It doesn't even kill regular goblins. Whereas at least um, I have floor presence with the Ice Wizard. I choose the Baby Dragon to synergize with my splash damage. Right here, I chose the Electro Wizard too uh, because I could stop the Miner and stunning him. I chose Tornado to also synergize. So remember synergy. So I have uh, Ice Wizard, I have the Baby Dragon, I also have the Tornado. So it's really great synergy there. Uh, I didn't really have a win condition, but luckily after i drop my ice golem i see that i have a mortar in hand so that's gonna be my win condition i place my mortar in front of the uh, crossbow to tank for the tower and right here i just want to drop another four floor presence before he kills off my mortar unfortunately didn't drop it in time but at least the e was able to zap it and reset it okay so right here i believe uh, i use my tornado to try to get some extra ship damage by putting him in front of the tower and let my baby dragon do some damage uh, i use my ice golem to kite away the skeleton bomber use my minion to deal with the uh, miner and my baby dragon to distract the executioner and now i have a counter push with the mortar baby dragon and one hp minions look at that so uh he totally whiffs his rocket here and so even if he hit it that's six elixir for four so i decided that you know this was actually really good that he may miss i'm totally in the lead and i kite the elder like after he was done kiting did you see that i have to kite him back into my battle here so now um i was able to get some good chip damage i think the mortar launched it three times as you can see on the other side too he's already at half hp there so baby dragon is there to distract the uh, execution oh i used the ice golem actually right here he does take out my mortar which is fine i descend uh, defended his miner i have a nice counter push so i get keep dropping units and right here i have synergy so i'm gonna draw everything into center right here and perfect my minions my baby dragon everything is splash damaging even the uh, uh electro Wiz gets to hit an extra unit so that's an arrow range, so I decided to play defense with my mortar, put it in the center. He's going to distract the Dark Prince while I uh, slow down the uh, uh, Miner as well as shock him. So he doesn't get as much chip damage as he would like. Since he has Rocket, he wants to chip me down as, fa uh, as fast as possible. Uh, I decided to just cycle out my arrows, take out the uh, tower. Was able to get the archers as well, so they died to my uh, mortars one, one drop and uh, yeah pretty much i'm holding the battle at the bridge here i use the ice golem to pull away the giant skeleton he's gonna have to cycle rocket down my tower but instead he goes ahead and just rocket just the ice whiz i place my mortar i place my ice golem down to tank for it and the ice golem ice whiz uh, perfect for a mortar he still tried to chip away i have tornado in hand this time so i tornado the miner to activate my king tower and pretty much yeah he gave up there he said it's good game so yeah um i definitely think i drafted better there even though i didn't get a win condition and i was luckily enough that he provided me a win condition i believe he probably had the choice of crossbow and mortar and he chose the crossbow because it's a, it has more floor presence and it stays there longer and yeah i think it's an epic and the mortar might be a rare or a common common that's right all right so i just decided to just play mortars all all around and take out that victory with no problem it was two to one there i mean two to zero 
All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. I actually wanted to sh save one life battle for you guys uh, for this match when I was at 11 and 1. But I was at work and um, they wouldn't let me get off yet, so I had time to kill. I decided to just play. So let's jump into another uh, replay here. Oh, is that the same one? No, this is not. So right here, I chose Mega Minion instead of Princess. I feel like the Princess can die to log and arrows, whereas Mega Minion needs a fireball and other stuff. It's definitely more unit. So I got my win condition right off the bat. I got a mortar, and it could pick off the furnace. Then he gave me a Lava Hound. Definitely choose a Lava Hound. Pause here. So Lava Hound, Golem, any high casting cost, that's going to be your main win condition. So the fact that he gave me a Lava Hound and then have a mortar to, to even take out his annoying furnace, uh, I felt like I, this is going to be a good draft. And then right here, I chose Baby Dragon. Just since I have all air units, I'm going to support and make it an air effective deck. So uh, my starting hand, I see that I have minions, so perfect. I basically have a, a basic Lava Hound deck with all the air units, and then a Mortar as my uh, plan B option of winning. Um, right here, I use my minions just to get rid of it, and I, to, I want to get to my Lava Hound first, place it in the back, then I plan to place a Mortar when the Lava Hound passes through. Uh, I had to arrow the Goblin Gang, because I didn't mind the Princess locking on, it's cause, because my Lava Hound's going to tank for it. Uh, right here I play my mortar to in the range where I can attack the furnace as well as the main tower So now I have a very nice counter push my uh, mortar is locked on to the ice with he plays his uh, I, I drag everything to the center together because my baby dragon could definitely uh, Splash damage and synergize and right here. I have a nice push with the mortar still alive baby dragon is gonna turn around take out those <clears throat> annoying spear goblin and get some pretty decent damage in with my pups left so I got my got my second lava hound since it's double elixir. I have enough elixir to cast it, so I went and did that. I waited till the flame spirits died, and then I started placing my defense to back up the lava hound. And then my mortar is down. I have a mega minion down. I believe. Oh, I missed the princess here. I wanted to drag the princess into the tower range so my mortar could splash damage and take her out. So I had to waste arrows, but the arrows was good value because I hit the uh, furnace and got the princess. And right here, he's trying to do some chip damage. I got my second Lava Hound on again. And I decided I think I'm playing another Mortar here to pick off the uh, Princess and the uh, Archers. And I dragged, this time I was successful enough to drag everything together. And the Mortar kills up everything. And I have four pups still. He, and then my Mortar is now locked onto his tower. So I'm just going to defend my Mortar for life here with uh, my dear life. And it got the second hit. Like now I could take out the Furnace. I have my Baby Dragon to take out the Archers. It gets another hit. That's three hits. And I believe I arrow away the princess here. And yeah, gets yeah, yeah, another hit there. So it's about to die. Just one more hit and boom, gets right off. Uh, right here, I didn't want to take a lot of damage since I'm in a tower lead. So I decided just to tornado everything back. And yeah, I did take out take it out pretty well. Place my lava hound. I believe I then place yeah, I didn't want any more damage, so I placed my mega minion on the right. Same type of push, I wait till my Lava Hound gets up to the bridge, place my Mortar, so now the Lava Hound's distracting everything and my Mortar gets to pick off. He locks into the Ice Wiz first, Baby Dragon does quick work against that Spear Goblin, you can barely even see it. I got up some value uh, arrows on the right there, again got some Goblins and <clears throat> Princess, and then drop my minions to prevent any more damage. Pretty much that Lava Hound's gonna explode and now I'm gonna have... Uh, a mortar locked onto the tower, yeah, and, and now have my second mortar as well, and that's far enough to hit the furnace. But instead, it locked on onto the princess, I believe, yeah, and then actually locks onto the tower on, onto the left. So now it's gonna pick away, and yeah, pretty much with four seconds left, uh, and I'm me taking the second tower, it, it was pretty much game. So, <clears throat> and then the final draft, I'm gonna show you guys see how why I drafted those cards as well. So watch. Right off the bat, I got my win condition. It's a Goblin Balloon. I prefer not those skellies that cycle, and especially in this kind of elixir. I backed it up with air, so I decided to use my minions. Right here, I had a hard decision. I wanted to do a loon, uh, Goblin Balloon combo with the hor uh, hog. Instead, I chose the E-Wiz because that's going to be my counter. They can stop my balloon and shock it, shock it, shock it. And right here, I chose the uh, Musketeer uh, because it's a little bit more healthier, and I could uh, do a little bit more DPS and back up my... Uh, um, balloon. Uh, so my first play here, I like to cycle out the Spear Goblin. So I place it at the bridge, and then I try to drop my Ice Spirit to get some extra damage. Uh, so he actually had to waste Skeletons, and then I get one off, one hit, yeah. I cycle out my minions. Right when I saw that he played the Royal Giant, I kind of wanted to punish him. So I actually played my Balloon a little bit farther back, because I saw my Miner was my next card to cycle to, and now my Miner is tanking from uh, the Balloon. 
I fireball away the wizard back one square and it changed directions. So now I, I just need to deal with the counter push here. Alright, so Ice Spirit, and oh, he's very good push because he has the Road Giant, he got the Hog, he got Goblin Barrel. I Fortunately though, while that's all happening, that tower I, I took down my first push and I was able to defend with one, uh, two more hits from the Royal Giant. I uh, got a nice counter push so I decided to tank for my counter push with my miner. Unfortunately, uh, he actually uh, defended with the guards. But with the uh, E was zapping the tower out, it was really good for me and now I had just really defend against this uh, counter push. So I decided to freeze the wizard, take out the ho uh, hog, wizard retargets. While that's all happening, I had a uh, musketeer on the right just blasting away the tower. I decided to go ahead and miner and um, fireball again, get some chip damage. And right here I knew it's in fireball range, so uh, it's actually not in fireball range, it's 239, but I had miner to chip away. So I didn't really need to spend too much on defense. I just decided to cycle to my miner fireball combo and actually wait it until I have enough elixir to do both. So now I drop my miner and then I put in the front this time because he read my uh, where I was going to place it and I dropped my fireball. So that gave me my 12th win and i was able to hit that grand prize of 64,000 gold such a great prize because now i'm rich i have 158,000 gold so i can, i'm just deciding which uh, common i want to get to level 13. okay so i'm gonna go ahead and pop open some chests for you guys thank, thank you guys for tuning in so i saved this magical chest opening here see what i get i just want some rare cards all right musketeers uh archers tombstone uh Hey, four lightning. Yes, epic cards are good too. Unfortunately, there was no legendary. Pop over this free chest. Nothing good. And right here, this nice prize of eleven thousand gold. Six fireballs, very helpful. Seven rockets. Okay. Yeah, lots of rares. Lots of rares. Keep it coming. Tombstone. Come on. Twenty-four elixir pumps. And my final card, six night. Ah, uh, prince. Not bad. Not bad. Um. Let me know if you guys like this video, enjoy it, then uh, hit the like button down below. But if you guys want to see more a double elixir draft uh, challenge and how to beat it or how to draft better, feel free to comment uh, down below so I can make some while this is happening this weekend and I'll give you guys more because I actu actually plan to play it multiple times even though uh, the, I don't, you can't get the gold prices again. But it's a great way to farm and you know it's fun, it's a different mode so I like to take advantage of it. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I got a dinner to catch right now. Happy Mother's Day uh, for all you guys this weekend. And um, yeah, this is Top Ramen signing out. Peace.